this defense have any heart? That's no. Tough. They suck. Versatility. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan? Uh. Caleb Carter. Like, they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock out on them? I hate the style of defense. I... Well, good hump day, morning friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope that your hump day dreams all come true. I hope that everything that you hoped for happens today and we just lost that camera right there there we go we got a backup as always you want to make sure you have a backup so here we are today is the first practice day we talking about practice not not the game not the game we're talking about practice and we are hoping that tyler smith who has completely tore his plantar fasciitis which is a good thing as opposed to a partial tear. Don't ask me, because I don't know why, but it's like that, and that's the way it is. Um, hopefully has a chance to play this week to finish off the season, as well as Big Hank. Big Hank is looking like he is close to being able to return as well. If we can get Big Hank on the field to help the run stopping, then you know we are in much, much better shape. And I'm going to say... I don't have the numbers in front of me. I should have. Forgive me. But I'm going to say that the Cowboys, um, through the course of the last couple of weeks, we, we know how bad it was run-stopping against the Buffalo Bills. It was atrocious. It was a disgrace. And the Cowboys didn't literally bust a grape um, on there. Actually, I've got them right here. But here's the thing. I want to look at the numbers because they've gotten better since that time um they gave up 266 yards against buffalo which is atrocious you, you just can't do that surprisingly against the miami dolphins they only gave up 91 and miami is one of the better run uh rushing teams in football and the detroit lions the lions have one of the best offensive lines in football they gave up 125 to them. They had dynamic running backs in a great running game. 125 is more than you'd like to give up. You'd like to give up less than 100. But considering that's uh, less than half of what you gave up to Buffalo without Hankins, that is definitely trending in the right direction. It's definitely trending in the right direction. And the thing I will say about the Cowboys that has been so good this year is they've been able to adjust. Shit happens. Listen, it's football. Everybody has bad games or people find weaknesses in your game and stuff, but the Cowboys seem to have been able to make adjustments to make up for those deficiencies. Again, worst game of the year, giving up yardage, boom, 266. But then 91, 125. I'd say that the Cowboys adjusted for not having Big Hank, We'll get him back, which will help, and that bodes well for playoffs. Um, also, and here's the other part that's actually good, too, is you got Mozzie Smith, some reps and practice time in there that will help you. So that way, when he's going in here, he's not going in wide, eyes wide open and unable to, you know, not used to actually playing at game speed in important games. Um, on the offense, I'll say the same thing that the offense, we started out, we started out like where Philly is right now. Let's be clear here. The Philadelphia Eagles right now don't know what they're doing. They are not getting the ball to A.J. Brown. I know, you know, people are like, I'm done with the Eagles, but you still have to worry about the Eagles. Uh, it's the NFL, and teams can change real quick. They can get right against the Giants um, this week and end up playing in the first round, and you may end up seeing them in the second round if we play well ourselves. So don't sleep on the Eagles and think that they're dead. The most dangerous animal in the world is one that's caged. It's in the corner. It's got nothing to lose. Um, but when you look at our offense where we were, we were 
literally not getting the ball to our best weapon, C.D. Lamb, which is kind of like what's happening with the Eagles right now. They seem confused, and you say, you've got one of the best receivers in football. Why aren't you using him? He was on pace for 2,000 yards the first 10 games of the season. Since that time, they've kind of gone away from him, and you can see him literally check out, which when you think about the beginning of the season, when the defense was playing so good and the special teams were getting points and things, the offense didn't have to the first couple of games against uh, the uh, Giants and the Jets. CeeDee Lamb was checking out. He did not talk to the, the press and things like that. They didn't crater like the Eagles did. But they were able to say, we need to adjust and figure out this thing out. And after that Cardinals game, I mean, after that bye week, you saw them saying, CD, we need to get you in motion. We need to get you on one-on-one battles, and we need to feed you the ball. Cowboys, they dig the deep ball. All this shit that Mike McCarthy talking about wanting to run the ball, that went out the window. And what was good about the Cowboys, and I think that the Cowboys are setting everybody up. If you notice what has kind of happened with the Cowboys, CD Lamb has been the constant. CeeDee Lamb literally has 1,000 yards more than the next guy on the roster. He has been an absolute positive beast. If he's one-on-one, you go to him with the football. He has been that good. But you have everybody else, you know, Brandon Cooks, Jake Ferguson, Jalen Tolbert, Michael Gallup, all about the same level. And all of them have had games where they've made great plays. And the thing that's kind of interesting is is how Mike McCarthy has gone through, and it was like each week, we're going to feature another guy. And it's almost like they've lulled people to sleep. You don't look at any of these guys and say, oh, man, they're going to be the game. You know, we got to stop CD, and then we have to stop, you know, Brandon Cooks. Because when you start focusing on that, then it's the Jake Ferguson show this week. And then it's the Jalen Tolbert, and then it's the Michael guy. They have all of these different guys that now you can figure out what's going to be the best matchup. And all of a sudden, we've been focusing in on the wrong thing. And see, I want you to think about what the Lions try to do. Because football, back in the 90s, we were just better personnel-wise. We had guys in the second strings that would be superstars on other teams as starters. We had depth. Our offensive line was so dominating, we could basically say, we're running the ball right here and you can't stop us. Now, because of free agency, so many teams, the talent is watered down and pretty much even that everybody has about the same talent level. You can't just dominate people. You have to be able to trick them you need to go where they're not thinking you're going to be and that's where the motion helps because now you're uncovering you know guys are having to switch up and they get confused what the lions were trying to do and got caught was they were trying to lull the cowboys to sleep with number 70 being an eligible receiver they kept going through and saying hey number 70 he's eligible cowboys say okay we got to cover him After a while, it's like, he's eligible, but they're not using him. They were setting up for the big finish, where they tried to do the change-up subtly, where the Cowboys were going to be lulled to sleep, thinking, we got to cover 70, and it's really 68. Problem was, is they kind of tricked everybody, including the official, who made the call the way he thought it was. And they, didn't, they had the opportunity to correct it, and they didn't because had they done that, then they probably wouldn't have been successful. So it was trying to deceive the Cowboys on what they were doing. Even though they've got one of the best offensive lines of football, even though Jared Goff was, had drove them down the field in, in a minute and some uh, to get the score, you still need an advantage sometimes of being where they're not thinking you're going to go. And that's what I think Mike McCarthy has actually done. The thing with Kellen Moore, Kellen Moore has been blessed with having Dak Prescott, who could throw the ball. Dak Prescott has covered up 
for a lot of uh, deficiencies of a lot of coaches, of Scott Linehan, of Jason Garrett, of um, Kellen Moore, where he's able to make plays where sometimes you couldn't. Mike McCarthy, his clock management, you question, but you look at how they're running the offense in the Texas Coast offense and putting Dak Prescott and the team in positions to succeed is working. And I see different wrinkles week to week, and I hope to continue that we see another new wrinkle as the playoffs come through. The one thing that I hope that we can really get going, and we have yet to really get it going well, is the running game. We need to be able to run 100 yards or more. Now, again, the last three weeks, we actually ran well against the Eagles, 138 yards. Um, Against Buffalo, we got 89. Against Miami, we got 97. And against the Lions, we only got 61 yards. That's my biggest worry is we need to be able to get that um, running ability. And part of that is you didn't have Tyler Smith out there. And the Detroit Lions have a great uh, defensive front. And they were doing a lot of run blitzing, which was getting past our guys. Um, You know, you're talking about a team. That's 11-5. and five. It's not like the Lions. I, I still can't believe I'm saying it. It's not like the Lions aren't a great team right now because they are. So can the Cowboys um, capitalize on the re-gift that the Philadelphia Eagles gave us? Let's listen in on Get Up This Morning and see what they have to say about it. You drop back. So, look, the Cowboys control their destiny in the division because of a somewhat shocking Eagles loss Mm -hmm. against the Cardinals. So now with his team on the brink of the title, Jerry Jones is appreciative of the gift Philly (laughs) gave them. Listen to this. Certainly we thought that uh, this is where we wanted to be from the day we walked into training camp, uh, be in a position to uh, play hard and win a game and and have it uh, uh, give us this kind of shot at home. So, uh, Excited to no end. I just couldn't believe it when uh, uh, Philadelphia uh, ended up losing that ball game this weekend and gave us this uh, uh, opportunity. A lot of people couldn't believe it, but it does put them in a position after sort of an up and down roller coaster of a season. There have been so many moments where they seemed like they were done. There were moments when they seemed like they were the best team. I want to start with this question and then we'll dive into it more deeply. But Marcus, I'll start with you as my former Cowboy. They've been given a gift. Are they good enough to cash it in? I don't mean beat Washington on Sunday. If they don't do that, then they don't deserve anything else. Are they good enough to take this gift they've been given and make a run at least to the NFC Championship game? Are they good enough to do it? Yeah, they are good enough to do it. It's about the San Francisco 49ers for the Dallas Cowboys. I think everybody else in this, every team that we have deemed to be top-tier teams between Detroit And obviously we look at Philly, well, maybe not anymore, but Mm -hmm. Dallas should be considered the second best team in the NFC. The Rams are making a charge, though, Mm -hmm. and are very scary with what they're doing. But if you look at this team and if they can play and stay within the way that they like to play football, they are a hard out for anybody. This is the first year, G, you know I've had many conversations. This is the first year I feel like Dallas, they beat the Commanders. This is set up for them to have an opportunity to play in the NFC Championship game. And that's all you can ask for, is one shot to get to the big show. But go and win this game, and obviously the Philly collapse, putting them in this situation, which it takes some luck to win championships, it sets up perfectly for Dallas. Now it's about how they play as Mm -hmm. opposed to will they have to go on the road? What scenario are they going to have to have? Are they going to have to do this in front of somebody else? I think this is 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 a fair shot as any for them to play for an NFC championship. That's exactly right. Something, of course, they haven't done in this millennium. And that brings me over to Mr. Saturday, because we're having our meeting this morning. Yeah. Uh, we're all enjoying your, your quarter zip there. <laughs> <laughs> and when I asked you that question, are they good enough? Why did you say the answer is yes? Because Dak Prescott's the best quarterback in the NFC. And anytime you got the best quarterback, you got the chance. And so you look at what he just did. He's got 27 touchdowns, four interceptions in the last 11 games. 11 games. So when you think about what he's putting out there, 
When your quarterback is playing that effective, you have a chance in any game. And now you put them at home if they take care of business against the Commanders this week, and they're averaging 40 points or close to it a game. That is tough to overcome. The bottom line in the playoffs is you got to score points. And Dallas can score points with the best of them. It's going to be a heck of a shot. Now, stand by, because I know I was on vacation for a week, so, so maybe I missed a bunch of meetings. But when I left, Brock Purdy was the MVP. <laughs> and what did Brock Purdy have me? Oh, I understand oh, okay, that. Okay. I, I mean, these things sure. change quickly, but yeah. I, it's very just worth quickly, pointing very out. Very quickly. And I also would like to introduce all of us here to the president of the Jalen Hurts fan club. She's been writing <laughs> that. I mean, for two years now, that's all I've heard. Yes. Kimberly Martin, is yes. Dak Prescott the best quarterback in the, in the this NFC? This season? Mm-hmm. Dak and Purdy are playing better than Jalen Hurts. I think that if you are being honest with yourself and watching film, that's an obvious statement. Jalen, this is a down year for Jalen Hurts. This is a down year for the Eagles as a whole. So when you look at when I look at the Cowboys, to me the only thing when you think about what concerns you about the Cowboys, them. That's it. That I think the Cowboys literally can beat any team with that quarterback, with C.D. Lamb playing as well as he has been this season. But again, we never see the Cowboys come through in big spots. And this is the year to they, take advantage of it. You're right. They're you as good you. as any team. <laughs> they're as but, bad. Where's the but? Okay. I mean, they're as bad as any team, too. Like, we just yeah. saw them. I think they're uh, significantly better than uh, the Lions. And they were in a dogfight against the Lions. Yeah. And the team that mm-hmm. hadn't had much of a pass rush all season, Aiden Hutchinson, was in the backfield as much yeah. as Dak Prescott, it felt yeah. like. And that's the scary part for this team. And then mm-hmm. the late-game situations, late-game decision-making. Like, we excuse it if it happened once or twice, but... It feels like every season, Mike yep. McCarthy at the end of the game gets a little tricky. And their defense was being passive towards the end of the game while their offense was being aggressive. It didn't quite make a whole bunch of sense to me. So I do think that they should be, which is a tough place to be. And they should be, given their pass. That is the they problem. It's always a should with the Cowboys. In, in the, the NFC will. Championship you can't game. answer the and will part. I expect them to get there. And anything can happen. So what you're telling me is, instead of throwing three straight passes oh, in the game, what gosh. should they have done? They, what, what? They, should, they should have run the ball. <laughs> yeah, that's what we like to hear. I, I want to come back, though, to the central question here, though. I'm, I'm just jotting down the names of the quarterbacks who are going to be in the playoffs in the NFC. Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy, Jalen Hurts, Baker Mayfield, we think, Jordan Love, we think, Matthew Stafford. Stafford is playing sort of without anyone paying any attention as well as good. anybody. Yeah, not last week. But uh, I maybe mean, not I, last week. They're but toting a rock. They're, they're running, they're running it. Right. Look, this is a league where everyone has right. been up and down every sure. single week. Except? So I just want, Marcus, one final time. Is Dak Prescott, when, when we, as we head into the playoffs next week, do yeah. we say the Cowboys have the best quarterback in the NFC? Yeah, going into the playoffs, absolutely. Uh, You talk about, like, the hard one is obviously Brock Purdy and what he's done, but when you look at what Dak has been able to do um, in the midst of, remember this too, Dak has played behind an offensive line that hadn't been healthy uh, a lot this season, having his right group together. And then when, obviously, we saw the issues in that game against um, Detroit with Aiden Hutchinson and the pressure that he was able to put on, and Dak still played, Phenomenal. Still was able yes, to push the ball down the field. There were some throws. That that throw down the seam to Jake Ferguson was one mm. of the best throws I've seen all yeah, season long from over. any quarterback. When you start talking about mm-hmm. his playmaking ability, I think what has happened with Dak is Dak has kind of thrown caution to the wind when it comes to how he need, understands he needs to play in order for this team to win. And sometimes that ta- that that means taking chances, and those chances mm-hmm. just have been working out. Jeff knows this. I, I won a national championship in college. It takes a little luck. It yeah. takes sometimes you just being on and being yeah. unconscious about what you're doing. And right now, he's unconscious about what he's doing. It takes a little luck for a guy not to wrap you up for a safety and you duck right. out of it and throw an 80 yard touch, Oof. a 70 yard touchdown. Those crazy. type of things have to happen mm-hmm. if you're going to win a championship. And I think right now, he's just capitalizing on a lot of these things that other quarterbacks aren't. Okay, first of the year, by the way, on January 3rd, our producer is Julian Goldstick. Yes. I'm not getting to the next one. I'm staying on this. I'm staying on this because I just worked out. I forgot about the name Jared Goff. So we used to do a bit on the old show. All right, we're just going to leave it right there. So Dak Prescott, best quarterback in the NFC right now? It's kind of hard to argue that point. Um, of course, I'm sure people will. 
All right, good people. We are going to get out of here, get back to the man cave, and get ready because everything from this moment forward is all about getting ready for our tailgate at FedEx Field. Um, I'm not sure if there's any tickets still available. Um, probably they were going to be basically they had a block of 60, uh, max of 60 tickets they were holding uh, for us. And after Tuesday, if they weren't sold, they were going to be working on selling because this is the end of the year and they want to get every penny that they can. So um, if you're still interested in going, the weather looks like it's going to be chilly. 42 degrees at kickoff, uh, but no rain or snow. We will be there tailgating. We'll have uh, plenty of food to eat. We'll have Jobu wings. We'll have uh, pulled pork, uh, big subs. We'll have um, black and blue burgers. We will have plenty for you guys to eat. I'm Mark Holmes. Oh, and if you need information on it, go to the community tab. In there, there is a post that has all the information on it. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, you know how we roll. We uh, are enjoying the Philly 500 and the Eagles meltdown. I, I, I know I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't, but I just have to. I, I just I can't help myself. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys. Right now, I'm at the point. This is not out of emotion. This is because I'm pissed off. I really thought hard about it throughout the game because I already knew it was over. And I said, I think there's going to be a midseason firing. I think there has to be. I think there's got to be one. There's got to be one. Can you – I mean, who? Who Who's going to fire, though? Uh, Dom? They better not fire Dom. He's the only guy that brings it. Uh, Chris Dog, David Super Chat goes, I ain't gonna it ain't gonna be perfect, but it's how we handle it together. If we see if we see them guys again, we might see um both them teams, Niners and Cowboys again. We'll need detail everything and make sure we do that. I agree. I agree. I mean we'll 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 get into a little bit of the the NFC where we're kinda at with the conference standings. Um, fuck the game. David Super Chat goes, we would have lost even without the turnovers. Well, matter. yeah, because you can't score points. You got to score touchdowns. You know, you're not doing that. It's bad. Sean Johnson, David Super Chat goes, you know, someone needs to light a fire under this team. We need to reach out to Frank Reich. I would be on the phone with Frank Reich right now. The quarterback, David.